Hello, my name is Vanessa. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be doing this video today. I haven't done a bookshelf tour in over a year and my collection of books has changed a lot over that time. I'm not gonna lie, my shelves are quite messy. You're gonna have to like excuse the mess. This is probably the last time you're gonna see my shelves shown to you in their rainbow format. I did do a video last year where I actually showed you rearranging my bookshelves to be rainbows but I'm actually not loving it and um, you'll see as the tour goes on that it hasn't really worked out very well for me at all. I kind of like gave up when we get to this bookcase and I really struggle to find books in a series and I'm pretty sure I've lost some books by actually having them out of like some sort of relative order. I am moving so this isn't the way that they're going to go back up but I will make like a new order video if that's something that people want to see like me setting my bookcases back up. Just let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd like to see. This is probably going to be a long video so you might need to get some snacks and come back. We have a lot of books to go through today and actually these aren't all of my books either like I'm reading about five at the moment they're just scattered all around this flat. I would describe my reading taste as really really broad. I read everything from middle grade, young adult, new adult, adult across all genres. Maybe not so much against contemporary romance um, but I do dabble in fantasy, sci-fi, contemporary, crime, mystery, thriller, horror. I'll read just about anything that I've been recommended. I'll also tell you on my shelves what I've read and what I haven't read either and if I have read it I'll let you know briefly if I'd recommend it or not so hopefully you might pick up some book recommendations from this video. If I come across a book and I tell you that I haven't read it will you please let me know what you thought of it if you have read it because I'm always taking books off my shelves and giving them to other people. There's some books I'm just unsure about whether I want to keep them and read them or whether I'd rather part with them and make space for new books. So I'm always looking for thoughts on books on my shelves and I'm always more than happy to have a discussion about books in the comments. So without further ado I'm just going to give you like a quick overview. So these bookcases are from Ikea. I got them maybe seven years ago. I think they're called the Gersby ones, they're not the Billy bookcases. The Billy bookcases are about 30 to 40 pounds each now. When I got these, these were only 12 pounds. I think they're about 16, 17 pounds now and I actually think they're really great value for money. So if anyone's looking to get some new setup, I'd highly recommend looking at Gersby with Ikea. So as you can see, this was like my good attempt at rainbow shelves. I've got purples, I've got reds, oranges, three winter pinks, Greens that go into blue, that go into dark blue, that go into sort of like black at the bottom. This is kind of like where I struggled a bit, so like the red started enveloping over here but then I had whites. I didn't really know where I wanted to put whites and this shelf here is where I've just like, where I've acquired books in the past few months and I've just like not been able to fit them on their respective colours so they've just sort of ended up there. And you know what, I actually think that is like the nicest looking shelf of everything here so maybe I'm just going to go with like a jumble theme. Ignore my like desk over here, it's just, just rubbish. And then it just starts to fall apart even more, just like getting all dark at the bottom. But whatever. I think we'll just start on the top and work our way down. So we'll start with the purple shelf and already you can see there's kind of like no rhyme or reason to this order. Um, I have like some books from one series where the books are somewhere else. They're all different kinds of genres, they're all different sort of like for different ages, which I'm not really pleased with the order if I'm honest. Please recommend me a better way. So of the books on here, I have read all of the Lunar Chronicles books here. I'm not going to bring them out because I'm sure everyone knows what the Lunar Chronicles looks like. I've obviously read all of the Percy Jackson books. I haven't read this one though, which is book five in the Heroes of Olympus. I've also read Shadow and Born. I actually really like these editions that I have, which are quite early editions. And I've also read The Virgin Suicides, which is one of my favourite books of all time. I have book one in the Aurora Cycle, I think that's what it's called, and it's Aurora Rising. I haven't got around to reading this yet, it does have sprayed edges. I got this because I was gifted book two off Rebecca, and she really enjoyed the series, so I wanted to read it too. Obviously, considering J. Kristoff, Google it. Kind of put me off going into this one a little bit. Anyway, a new addition to my shelves is A Sky Beyond the Storm, which is book four in the Ember and Ashes series. This book is signed by the author as well, which is why I bought it. I wasn't up to this book yet. I've only read book one in the series and I don't own book three, but I own book two, but I just couldn't pass up on getting this one signed. I am currently rereading book one, so it is in my bedroom. It's not on my shelves and I'm still loving it. So I'm looking forward to completing the series. Here we have Wayfarer by Alexandra Bracken. I got this in the second half shop really really cheap and was dead excited to get it 
got home and realised this is actually book two in a series and I thought I was picking up Passenger. So I still haven't got around to picking up Passenger, but this was like a pound and it's in brand new condition so I can't complain. But I did buy this about five years ago now, so maybe I should actually just bite the bullet and get Passenger. If you've read this series, let me know what you think of it. Should I actually just go in and buy book one or should I just get rid of this one? Next on my book, but one I'm hoping to get around to really soon is A River of Royal Blood. I got this on my birthday last year and it was gifted to me by Vaya. So Vaya, if you're watching, thank you very much for this book. This is a North African inspired fantasy that I've heard a lot of great things about. It's on my TBL for next month, actually. I've just been dying to get around to reading it. Next is another charity shop find, which I got for a pound, I think, in Oxfam, which absolute steal because this book is also in brand new condition and that's Wicked Fox. This is a young adult fantasy based on Korean folklore. I've heard a lot of good things about it. This also has a sequel out now. This is part of a series which I started but I wasn't enjoying so I stopped. This is book two in the Live Ship Traders series by Robin Hobb. I can't even remember what the first one is called now. I just think it's Ship of Magic but um, I didn't enjoy Ship of Magic. I only got maybe like a quarter of the way in and just wasn't feeling it. So stopped, but I've kept it just in case. Let me know if you think I should like give the first one a go again. Because I'm really down for like trying books again. Because sometimes I'm just not in the mood there and then, but enjoy them later on in life. Traitor to the Throne is book two in Rebel of the Sands, um, which is a book that I reread last week and really enjoyed, so I will be picking this one up soon too. Honor Among Thieves is a book that I found for 10 pence in a charity shop. I mean, what a steal for a hardback. And I bought it because one of the authors is Rachel Kane, and I loved Rachel Kane as a teenager when I read her Morganville Vampire series. I thought she was very witty in her writing. I'm really sad that she's now passed away. So I've been keeping this and hoping to read it in sort of like, in her memory. I'm not going to part with it now that she's passed. Another new edition is the Prison Healer. This is on the purple shelf because this is the Fairy Loot edition and it changed the cover from like a teal to a purple which I really like. It's got nice stenciled edges as well. I think Fairy Loot did a fantastic job with this book actually and I'm looking forward to reading it soon. Their Fractured Light is book two in the Starbound series. I've read the first one but never got around to the second one. The first one is called This Shattered World and I actually had this to read for Do This Thing a thon. God, I've struggled saying that so much. But I haven't got around to reading it yet, but I'm hoping that maybe I can squeeze some reading in today or tomorrow to get that read and start this one because I do have book three as well, which we will see, and I just haven't got around to reading it. And I need to finish this series so I can either just be done with it or, I don't know, give it to someone else. Okay, that went quicker than I thought. Let's um, move on to the red shelf. Okay, so these shelves are just like such a mess as well. I have a book pot which came recently in a Lumicrate. I haven't had a Lumicrate for very long, so this is sort of like one of the first items that I have. And I absolutely love it. I love Egyptian mythology. I'm just not quite sure what I want to do with it yet. I don't know whether I want to like keep my bookmarks in it or turn it into like a little plant pot. I don't know. I'm open to suggestions. This was actually the book that came in that Illumicrate box with the book pot. It's In the Ravenous Dark. This is a new adult, I'm going to say, about like a blood magic. And it has a polyamorous relationship in it, so I'm really excited to get around to reading this one. I've not read anything with Polly before. And it has stenciled edges which match the cover art here, which is the Illumicrate exclusive. I thought they'd done a great job with this book, I was impressed. Another recent edition is Hero at the Fall. I actually found this on Amazon for £4, so I was like, I'm just, you know what, I'm just going to buy it. If you watch my Do The Thing If I'm vlog, I have reread this first book in anticipation for getting around to, to portray it to the throne, and I really liked it, and it was a quick read, so I don't know if this cover is the UK version or whether this is out in the US as well, but I really love this cover. It's like my favourite colours, gold and this shade of red. I've actually read quite a few books on this shelf, I'm impressed. I, actually, wait, wait, I've read hardly any. Scratch that. I've read these ones here and none of the others. Crescent City is a book that is one of my favourites, I'm not going to lie. I think the cover art is absolutely stunning on this book. I don't think there's a cover art that I like more than this one, if I'm honest. The way the artist has done this face, oh, I love it. But it's absolutely no secret that I like this book on this channel. I also have Daisy Jones and the Six. I've read this. I would recommend it. I really like Taylor Jenkins' read. Can I just say, doesn't this look like the bass player out of Manskin? You know, the Eurovision winners. She gives me this vibe. But I've pulled this out to show you because I love the sprayed edges on this. This is one of the first books I owned with sprayed edges. I'm pretty sure it was Gavin who was serving me at the till at the time. And my books were being put through and then Rebecca picked this up and was like, Vanessa, look at this. And I ran from the till 
to get the, to get a copy of this to add to my order, but it was just really embarrassing at the time. But you know, never mind. I get too excited over books. Three Dark Crowns. I've read this. I just haven't read the last book in the series, but I've read all the other ones. But this is one of my favorite books of all time, and I've spoke about this a lot. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which is a recent read, and I really enjoyed it. I would recommend for people that want to dabble into crime but haven't really gone there yet. Would recommend. The rest of these I haven't read. So I have The New Witch by V.E. Schwab. I bought this purely because I had to pick a book that was on offer. Um, I don't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about it when I picked it up. I'd actually never heard of it before. But it has stenciled edges, so... People like V.E. Schwab. I've not read many of her books and what I have read I never enjoyed, so we'll see how I feel about it, I guess. I think this is a standalone. I've not heard many people talk about it, so I just don't know what it's about. The Castle of the Tangled Magic, I got this as part of a deal in Tesco's when I wanted the Gilded ones. So the Gilded ones was £5, or I could get two for £7. So obviously I just picked up a random book. And I'd seen this on How to Chain Your Gavin. I think he had Sophie Anderson on um, in one of his author interviews, and I thought, you know what, that sounds pretty cool. So. I bought it. Probably gonna read this and pass this on to my nieces and nephews. Oh, it's illustrated, that's cute. Angel Mage is one that I got for Christmas off Rebecca because she knows that I like Garth Nix's books and writing. It's a bit different from the rest of the books that he has written. I think this is young adult and it's a standalone. Oh wait, it might be adult. I mean, on the back, the praise comes from Philip Pullman and Holly Black, so I, that's why I assumed it was YA. I can't really remember what I was talking about when I was speaking about this book, so I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. I'm, I'm having such a great time here. This is book two in Nevermore. I've read the first one and I really, really loved it. Again, this is another one that I'm dying to get round to. I just have too many books in too little time. I can't wait to show you the cover for the third book though because I'm obsessed with the edition that I have. If you haven't read Nevermore, I'd highly recommend it. This Mortal Coil, which is one that I'm hoping to get around to reading very soon. It seems to have been taken off on TikTok this one. I got this for my birthday off Claire. Thank you very much Claire. Can't wait to get around to reading it. I kind of wanted to save this for a summer read. I know it's not very like summery, like the whole idea of like bioweapons and stuff, but I like to eat up things like this on a summer day. Also just looking at this cover is one of the most satisfying things. It looks like this off powder. Like you could touch it and it would like feel like powder. I don't know, that's weird. Let's just put this back. Wonderscape is a middle grade that I got off Rebecca. It sort of seems like a bit like a modern Jumanji. Seems like it's going to be a quick read. Um, I'm going to keep this for Believerthon, I think. Love the cover. I think this is another author that Gavin's actually interviewed and which made me interested in the novel. Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I've heard so, so, so much about this book, honestly. This and Cersei, I have them, but I haven't read them. After Percy Jackson, I wanted to read something that was like Greek mythology, but adult which this gives me, it's also LGBT, but because of the things that I've heard about it, I'm scared to go into it because it's either going to be great or it's going to be poo. I don't know. So that's why I haven't read it. Crown of Feathers, I got this for my birthday off my dad. I actually thought he made a great purchase here. It's young adult and it's part of a series, I think, but the writing is like so small. So this is going to be like a chunky long read. This is another one that I've been dying to get around to reading as well. I know that I say that about all of the books here, but honestly, there is some that I just can wait for and some that I can't wait for and this is one that I can't wait for. Bringing Up the Bodies by Hilary Mantle is book two to Wolf Hall which is one that I haven't read either and this is a series that I can definitely wait for like I'm not in a rush to get around to reading Wolf Hall or Bringing Up the Bodies. If you're new here I'm just going to say I did a history degree and before I'd done my history degree I really loved history but once I finished my degree I was like I don't want anything to do with history ever again. It totally ruined it for me but since I've started working in the past couple of years I've started to miss history a little bit so I have these on my shelves for when I feel like I want to step back into history because I certainly don't want to read a non-fiction history book ever again but I'm willing to try a bit of fiction. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I haven't read this one but this is another one that I'm willing to wait on reading as well. I had this in a different cover but then I found this one and liked this one more so got rid of my old one. It wasn't a charity shop so I don't feel guilty about doing that at all. This is another book where if you have thoughts on it I would love to hear them in the comments. Catch 22, never read it, not in a rush to read this one. Lame is, never read it. I'm only keeping it because someone said you should get rid of it because it spends too long talking about how the Paris sewer system works. But you know what, I actually thought that was really interesting, would like to know how the Paris sewage system works. So the reason that someone said was really boring I actually found quite interesting, so... I'm keeping it. And over in the corner here is A Great and Terrible Beauty by, by Libba Bray. I've never read this, but I have read The Diviners and I really liked her writing. So when I saw this in a second-hand shop, I thought I'd pick it up for 
when I finish the Diviner series and I want to read something else by Lover Bray. But I'm not in a rush to read that one. I mean, I've already had it for about three years, so it'll probably be there another three. So this is the last top shelf, but this is the bookcase, which is kind of like, I just gave up on the colour scheme, so we have a mix of everything here. Empire of the Sands is a new recent edition. I don't think I've necessarily read anything that is like a magical world inspired by medieval India. So, this one sounds good to me. So looking at this shelf, the ones that I've read are Ruin and Ryzen which I love this edition for. I held out for ages trying to find this edition of Ruin and Ryzen. Rebecca actually found it online. Thank you so much. And I thought it was a good end of the series, actually. The Wrath and the Dawn is a recent read, and it's one of my new favourite reads of all time. It's kind of a retelling of Arabian Nights. I think I spoke about it in one of my recent wrap-up videos, so if you want to know what my thoughts were on this in more detail, I think it's my last. No, maybe three videos ago. I've read this Percy Jackson book here, and I've also read Station Eleven, which I... Thought was okay, but I'm keeping it because one specific chapter, which is set in an airport, is one of the best things that I've ever read in literature. I don't know why, but I just can't part with this book because I don't want to part with that specific chapter. I don't know. I'll probably never read it again. It's just weird. So that's all that I've read on this shelf. We have Battle Royale, which is probably a book that I've had on my shelf the longest that I haven't read. I got this in a second hand shop and it's in new condition. I've seen the film so many times over the years, so... I don't know, it's just kind of one of them books I just have as a collection. Book two in The Expanse, never read the first one, never read the second one, obviously. My husband keeps trying to get me to watch The Expanse series with him, um, and I keep turning him down because I want to read the books first, but he's like, well, you never get round to reading the books, so just, just watch the TV show with me. God, like, we need something to watch together, and I'm just adamantly like, no, I have these books, so I'm not. Well, I think this might be a horror. I don't know. I don't know too much about this. I got it in a second-hand shop really cheap. Every time I'd been going into a second-hand shop and this book was there, I'd seen people, like, snatching it off the shelves, so I thought, well, it must be good if the way people are acting every time they see it. And then I finally found a copy that people hadn't snatched, so I picked it up to see what all the hype was about, but I'm not in a rush to read it. House of Hades, I haven't got to this one yet. I can't remember which book this is in the series, but I haven't read this one yet. The Discovery of Witches. This is one I'm not sure whether I want to get rid of. I found this for like 10 pence in a charity shop and it's in brand new condition so I, you know why not but it's really really thick so if this is worth the effort please let me know otherwise I think I'm just going to get rid of this because it is a really long read. Another book by V. Schwab that I haven't read. I think this is part of a series. Rebecca got this for me as a gift but I'm actually really excited for reading this one because I think the premise sounds really good. It's about two college roommates that get into an accident and they develop magical powers but one of them goes really good and one of them goes really evil and they become enemies. The Dragon Republic, I've read The Poppy War twice. Even though I've had The Dragon Republic, I just can't physically start it because I'm just so obsessed with The Poppy War and I'm scared to carry on reading. To <laughs> I don't know, it's just one of them reader things, I guess. It's like when you're really hot and you're going to jump into like a cool body of water and you know it's going to feel so good. That's how I feel about the anticipation of reading this. I don't know, this is getting all weird, so I'm just going to put this back. A recent edition, Law, Greek Mythology, how could I not? I just wanted this in paperback. So when I went into Waterstones when the shops opened and saw that this was bomb buy one get one half price, I thought it was my birthday. One I want to read soon. A book that I've never read that's been on my shelf for a long time is The Shadow of What Was Lost. I wanted to read a little bit more adult fantasy but didn't know where to start and I found this in a second hand shop. On the back it says it's a traditional saving the world epic fantasy with the flavour of something new. Will appeal not only to We Love Time readers but to anybody looking for a coming of age fantasy tale with likeable characters and a strong world building. So that's kind of why I picked this up. Um, I've not read anything by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson per se. But I have some of their books, which I haven't read, which is obviously a running theme. But I'm not in a rush to get around to reading this. <sighs> then we come to Nevernight. From what I know about some of the themes of this book, I don't think I want to read it anymore. So I'm probably going to donate this. But I was really excited when I got the American version because I think the American covers are so much better than the UK covers. So that's a bit disappointing. But anyway, moving on. Another gift off Rebecca is Do You Dream of Terror 2. I love space sci-fi. Space sci-fi is my favourite sci-fi. I haven't read it yet, but it's very, very, very high on my list. And it's about, like, seeking, like, a better life and a better world elsewhere in space. One of my favourite things on my bookshelf of all time is this illustrated edition of The Lightning Thief. Kind of want to display this somewhere really cool. Like, I feel like it's, I'm just wasting this book by having it sideways, like, in the corner over here. I just don't know where I want to display it. Um, let's just see if I can get it open and find you some examples of what it looks like inside. So it is illustrated, like, wow. It's one of my prized possessions. 
I just, I don't know how to do this book justice. I don't know where I want it to go. I don't know if I want to display it open, like on my shelves or what, but this is honestly one of the best things that I own. Rebecca got it for me and I'm just, oh, I think I cried when I saw this. So this orange shelf I've actually been quite successful with. I've read The Priory of the Orange Tree, which not to sound like a cliche, but this is one of the best books that I've ever read. It's such a fresh thing for fantasy to have like female friendly and sapphic high fantasy with dragons and stuff. It's a standalone and I actually hate that it's a standalone because I would read so much more in this world with these characters. The cover art is phenomenal. If you haven't read it it's absolutely worth sticking with. It's like 800 pages but the payoff is so so worth it. I do intend someday to display it this way because I just oh, I love this dragon. I just need to get rid of some books first. Next I have a special edition of The Curator by M.W. Craven. He's one of my favourite crime authors. Actually I'm just going to say he is my favourite crime author. This is book three in the Washington Poor series. It's actually number 168 of the first editions and it's signed. If you like the crime books by J.K. Rowling but also don't want to continue supporting J.K. Rowling, I'd highly recommend The Puppet Show, which is book one, as a good alternative to that series. Next is To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. Becky Chambers is one of my favourite authors. Rebecca kindly got this for me as a gift. Um, a signed edition because she knows that Becky Chambers is one of my favourite authors. It's a novella. I actually really love it. I know some people aren't that enthralled by it. But this is one of my favourite books of all time. But I don't know if it's just because I love the space genre so much. This crew are far out in space. They've been sort of like crowdfunded by private organisations to go there and do research. And something happens back on Earth when they're out there. And they're sort of wondering about what their options might be. And what the best thing for them to do might be. Really, really love this would recommend. The Martian in the US cover, which is the best cover in my opinion. Another great book and I really love the film adaption. Usually I don't like film adaptions, but this one I thought they did such a great job. Alumni, which I'm keeping because my dyslexic husband really, really loves this. He's not a reader, but this whole like mixed media type of format really kept him engaged. So if anyone has any more books set out like this can you please give me recommendations so I can buy them for him. Having it like different all the time really helped. With the Fire on High is another book that I got off my dad for my birthday. He did a great job with the Waterstone Cellar. I haven't read this one but I have read other books by this author and really really loved them so I'm very excited to get around to the reading this. It seems like a short read. It's a young adult contemporary and the main character wants to be a chef which I thought was a really interesting take. I got this as a graduation gift. Um, it's called The History of the World in 100 Objects. It's about the objects that are in the British Museum, which I wrote my dissertation on about how that was kind of controversial, but you know, I got this as a graduation gift anyway. But it's actually really interesting because it looks at objects through time. So some of like the oldest man-made or man-manipulated objects through to like the invention of the credit card and how it's changed our lives. The Twelve by Justin Cronin which is the sequel to The Passage. I read The Passage about 10 years ago and enjoyed it just never got around really to reading the sequel which I found in a second-hand shop a few years ago. Two Like Lightning which is the first book in the Terra Ignata series. I bought this when I got The Shadow of What Was Lost because I wanted to start reading more adult sci-fi fantasy and I just never got around to reading it, but I am still interested in this one, so I'm keeping it for that reason. Half Lost, which is part of the Half Bad series. I did read Half Bad and really liked it, and then found book two and three, I'm not sure which one is which, in a second-hand shop really cheap. But by the time I found them, I'd forgot what I happened in Half Bad, which I donated myself, so I kind of really need to repurchase Half Bad so I know what's going on. But I did enjoy it at the time. The Outsider by Stephen King, which is probably going to be given to Grandma because she likes crime. Probably not going to get around to reading that one ever, actually. A Torch Against the Night, which is high up on my TBR because, I'm, like I said, I'm rereading An Ember and Ashes now so that I can continue on with the series. A book in the Trials of Apollo series. I'm not there yet. I'm only on to Heroes of Olympus but we will be here by the end of the year, I promise. Some more Rick Riordan. This is book one, I believe, in the King Chronicles. I think I do have more books in the King Chronicles because I pick them up and I find them for like 10 and 20 pence in a charity shop. I want to finish off his like Greek mythology world before I start going into his Egypt series, but 
you know, I, I just can't pass them up at 10 or 20 pounds. This is another one that I picked up for really, really cheap in a charity shop for less than a pound. I was born for this by Alice Osman. She is the author and artist of Heartstopper, which I read and loved. And I never really intended to read any of her actual novels because YA contemporary isn't something that I like to read. But I read Loveless and really enjoyed it, so I picked this one up as well. But it's not high up on my list as a contemporary YA. Two Dark Reigns, which is part of the Three Dark Crown series, which I've already spoke about. This is book two in an adult fantasy series. I've kept these mainly for my husband. Book one is Theft of Swords which will be coming up later on. I also have book three. I've heard these are good for fans of Brandon Sanderson so I bought them. When I saw them obviously secondhand in a charity shop they're quite battered. But it did come as a recommendation from one of my favourite booktubers from a few years ago so I picked them up for that. I'll probably not get around to reading these anytime soon but I definitely don't want to part with them. I don't have many books in pinks or yellows because they tend to be YA contemporary which isn't something that I read a lot of but we have like a random saga here. I've read all of saga. I really really loved it. Obsessed actually. The Eve Illusion which is book two in the Eve of Man series by Giovanna and Tom Fletcher. I've spoke about this series a lot. It's a YA series in which Eve is a 16 year old girl who is the last young female on the planet and she's sort of like protected because they want to use it to like obviously breed off her. It's a very underrated series actually so if, so if you haven't read it I actually have a video about it which I would highly recommend that you go and watch. Especially if you're a fan of like young adult dystopian with really good romance in it. I don't usually like enjoy couples but I really like that one. The Hate You Give which is high up on my TBR as well but I haven't read it yet. Opposite of Always, I hadn't heard a lot about this book but I did find this in brand new condition for like 20 pence in a charity shop and I thought like it's criminal to not to, but it's not high up on my list because it's a YA contemporary. The last time I made one of these videos people were like, oh my god, you have to read The Thousand Splendid Sons or The Kite Runner. I'm now very pleased to inform you that I did read The Kite Runner and I did really enjoy it. I rated it five stars and I have now passed that on to someone else because I think it's important to share those types of stories with other people. And because I enjoyed it so much it has bumped A Thousand Splendid Sons up on my TBR. I think this is book three in a contemporary romance series by Jenny Han. I have all three because I found them in like a box set in the works for five pounds and I really like Jenny Han's other series which is um, To All The Boys I've Loved Before. They seem like quick reads as well so maybe like on a pool day at a beach somewhere which will never happen in the next few years because you know pandemic. Another example of finding a book really cheap in a second hand shop which is later on in a series of which I don't have the first book for but if I did find the first book in a charity shop and didn't pick this one up and I actually enjoyed it, what would be the chances of finding this one? But it's been like three years now and I've never found the first one, so whatever. Where the Crowdad Sings, I've read this and this is another one of my favourite books of all time. It's an adult historical fiction slash crime slash romance. There's a lot of hype for this one and it really lives up to it. Clap When You Land, I've read this and I thought it was beautiful. The Fallen In Love montage, I got this for my birthday, I think it's off Brightness Katie Reads. And I was actually saving this for Pride Month, which is now, so I'm going to be reading this soon. Loveless, which I read. Loveless is the book by Alice Osman that I have read. I got this for my birthday off Katie Gilroy and I really, really love this. The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. I do enjoy Morgan Matson's books actually so when I find them secondhand I pick them up. Everything Leads to You by Nina Lacour. You can't buy this in the UK, you can only get the US editions so it took me so long to actually find this secondhand in the UK. I got it this year after having it on my TBR for about seven years. It's a sapphic romance so it's definitely one that's been in the back of my mind for a long time. Heartstopper which I've read and loved. This Shattered World, which we've already spoke about the series for. I don't know if this is book two or book three, actually. Then just more Saga and volume one of Paper Girls, which is actually by the same author as Saga, which is why I got it. But it's not as good as Saga. These are some more of my newly acquired books, because this is where I started putting books where I just started giving up on my colour scheme for. From Blood and Ash, another present of Rebecca. Honestly, most of these books are of Rebecca. I don't read smut, but I just kind of want to be involved in the discussion around this, so... That's why I want to read it. XOXO, which is a recent arc that I have to read this month. Unravel the Dusk, which is the sequel to Spin the Dawn, which I read and really enjoyed. Wolf Hunter River, which is part of a series that I haven't started yet. 
I don't even have book one for it, but it's Rachel Kane. But I was given this by someone who thought it was book one and I knew I wanted to start this series anyway, so I took this off them. Legendborn, I haven't read it, but it's high up on my TBR. I know this is highly covered. A Pinch of Magic, I got this for my birthday off Megan. I haven't read it yet, but it is another one that I'm leaving for Believerthon. It is a middle grade. I actually did start this and was really, really enjoying it. But at the time, I just had other books to read for book challenges, so I'm excited to get back around to reading this one. Escape from Aurora, which is the sequel to Frostheart, which I've read and really enjoyed. I just haven't got around to reading this one yet. This is an illustrated book and it's a series which I really love. It's definitely not one that I'm putting off reading. The City of Brass, which I've started and stopped reading quite a number of times now. I just can't get into it. And I don't think that it's a bad book. I'm just never in the right headspace to read it. I won't part with it because I'm desperate to give this a good go. Ninth House, I believe this is a War of Stones exclusive edition. Love the black sprayed edges though. I haven't read this yet. So Three of Thorns, I have read this and I thought it was good. I think the premise could have been executed a bit better, but I would still recommend it. Crooked Kingdom, I got this as a birthday present off Ali. I'm currently in the middle of Six of Crows, I've almost finished it. And my intention is once I've finished it to start reading this one straight away so I can get to the Netflix show. Serpent and Dove, I got this for Christmas, so it is a recent one. I got this off Rebecca as well. But it's very, very chunky, which is why I keep putting it off. Gideon the Ninth, which is also a recent purchase that I'm really looking forward to reading. At the same time I got Gideon the Ninth, I got Cry as well, which again is another one I'm desperate to get around to reading. Queen of Nothing, which is book three in the Fork of the Air, I believe it's called, series. I've read book one, but not book two. I don't even have book two, but I just had to pick something else up, which was on offer in Mortarstones and knew I would need this eventually. The Bright and the Pale, which is a... Fairy loot book. I had to think there. It has glitter sprayed edges which you might not be able to see. It has like a weird texture. I would have bought this had it not been in a fairy loot box so I'm very very pleased with this one. Descendant of the Crane which I got secondhand but is an Illumicrate exclusive because it has sprayed edges. Sweet and Bitter Magic which I pre-ordered and it was one of the first books that I ever pre-ordered purely because I was drawn in by the cover art and stayed for the Sapphic Witches. And the Bone Shard's Daughter which is an adult fantasy I also think this is LGBT. Dying to get round to reading all four of these, if I'm honest. Hardstopper Volume 3, which I've read and enjoyed. We're going to come back to this one in a bit. That's part of the series that we spoke about, which was um, the Theft of Swords one. I think that's book three. Percy Jackson, which I've obviously read and enjoyed. Things a Bright Girl Can Do. I found this secondhand in a charity shop and I haven't read it yet. I think it's a YA about thoughts for women. Half Wild, we've already discussed. Heroes of Olympus. Kingdom of Souls. High up on my TBR. These are part of the Scythe series. I read Scythe and really, really loved it. My husband's reading it at the moment, so it's not on my shelves. I think this is the second one and this is the third one. But I started reading this one and actually wasn't enjoying it, so I had to put it down. I haven't decided if maybe I was in a bad headspace or if I just didn't enjoy the book anymore. Five Dark Fates, which is the last book in the Three Dark Crown series, which I haven't read. I just, I'm just too scared to finish this because if I don't like the ending, it's like one of my favourite series of all time. Don't know what I'll do. The Hobbit, which I've never read, but I saved this from the bin because my grandma was going to put it in the bin and I was like, what on earth? Look at this. This is beautiful. This is art. This stack of books here are all like books that I'm not that bothered about or they're very old. That's my great grandma's edition of Lady Chatterley's Lover, which is covered because it was like Rudy Doody at the time. Animal Farm by George Orwell. This is really old. And 1984 by George Orwell, which is also really, really old. Books by Robin Hobb, which are book one and book three in the Farseer trilogy. I don't know if I have book two or not. I'm not that bothered if I'm honest. I haven't read anything by Robin Hobb that I've enjoyed. So they're probably going to sit on my shelves for a long time unread. Book three in the Live Ship series. This one just doesn't match my other editions. Which doesn't bother me at all. Book one of the Wheel of Time and I have book two in the Wheel of Time. A family member has asked me to read these, which is why I have them but they're just not my priority at all. I don't think I'm going to enjoy them if I'm honest. And I have this copy of June from the 80s which I just sort of like keep for the cover and for the aesthetic of it. I'm probably never going to read this but I just think this looks cool. I have an intention to sort of like display this somewhere really awesome. I just don't know when, I don't know how. So I wanted to show you Holopox like away from the shelves on its own because honestly this edition is one of the nicest books that I own. I won this in a giveaway on Brightness Katie Reads' this channel. I just entered not thinking much of it and oh okay when this turned up I was just like floored. So it's got like sprayed edges, cute cute. Oh my god like like what? 
Um, when I had this in my hands and like saw the foil embossing and everything, I was just astonished. Like Illumicrate and Fairy Loot could never. And I already love this series so much. I kind of just want to display it just like this, you know. This is just like chilling because this is a book that I'm currently reading. So the actual book is in my bedroom. If I'm honest, I can't really get into it. I think it's a good book, but every time I put it down, I have no interest in picking it back up. Stranger the Dreamer, got this for 50 pence in a charity shop. I haven't read it yet. The Gilded Ones, which is a recent edition, which is high on my TBR. This is part of the deal I got from Tesco's. Starter for 10. I got this because on the back it says that the main male character is a massive Kate Bush fan. And my husband is honestly one of the biggest Kate Bush fans in the entire world. He tells me over and over again. He would leave me for her in a heartbeat. Don't blame him if I'm honest. Stephen King, Doctor Sleep. This is the sequel to The Shining. I've not read The Shining. I think I might part with this one if I'm honest. I don't know, let me know what you think. Fate of the Tealin, which I, th I think this is like book two or three in the series. Like I said, I've got books two and three in this, but not the first one because I keep finding these in charity shops for 10 pence and thinking, well, I'm gonna need them eventually. I just need to come across the first one. Full Disclosure, which is a young adult contemporary about someone who is HIV positive. This is definitely high up on my TBR. I've actually went to start this so many times, but chose something else. But it is a quick read, so I'm gonna read it this month. Gemini, read it, liked it. Keep it for my husband. A Winter's Promise, which has sat on my shelves for so long. This is a translation from a French novel, I believe, which is a young adult high fantasy. It makes me think a little bit of like um, Final Fantasy, like the fluffy one, was it 13? I've wanted to read this so many times but kept putting it off. Uh, Life Like by J. Kristoff. Probably going to pass this on to my husband. Renegades by Marissa Meyer. Heard a lot of good things about this novel but I've had this for far too long on my shelves unread. I think I've had this for about two or three years now so I want to read this soon. Theft of Swords, we've spoke about this. Call Me By Your Name. I have never read this but I do want to read this. There's been some discussion and some discourse about this online but I am from a country where this relationship is legal and fine so... We'll see how I feel about it. Empress of All Seasons. I got this because I had a Waterstones gift card and just didn't know what to buy. And the back of it sounded really interesting. But I have had this for about four years now and never read it. So I either need to commit to this book or get rid of it. That's part of the Free Dark Crown series. Bloom, which I would recommend for fans of Heartstopper, has a very similar vein to it. Although this is a standalone. I enjoyed this and I'm going to read it one last go before getting rid of it. That's just Heartstopper Volume 2 and the rest of my Saga collection. But then at the back I do have Fables, which I would love to collect because I have read them all. But I just can't afford to buy them all new, so when I see them in secondhand shops I pick them up. Hence Volume 1 and Volume 5. But obviously not a lot of people get rid of Fables. I'm not going to pull these out, but these are Brandon Sanderson, obviously Mistborn and The Way of Kings. I did start to read The Final Empire, which is my first read by Brandon Sanderson, and got about a third of the way into it and hated it. So I've never continued to read anything else by Brandon Sanderson. I know in my bookshelf tour over a year ago, I said the exact same thing about these novels and a lot of people told me to get rid of them. I'm going to give The Way of Kings one go. I'm going to give it like 10% and if I don't like it, they're all gone. The Cruel Prince, I read this a few months ago and really loved it. It's kind of like my guilty pleasure in YA. I haven't read any of these books by Pat McNess. I got them really cheap in a charity shop. As th I think the set was like a pound. But I have read a lot of things by Patrick Ness and really enjoyed them. Confessed by Colin Hoover, I've read this and enjoyed it, which was strange for me to like a new adult romance, especially a straight romance. But I did enjoy it, so I kept it. Trials of Apollo and the King Chronicles, like I said, I'm just not there yet. This is a book that I found in barter books for about £2, um, in really good condition, and it's The Three. This is a young adult horror thriller. I think Rebecca read it and really enjoyed it, which was why I picked it up. But it's been on my shelves for so, so many years. I think it's, I've had it for about five years. So I don't know, should I keep it or not? Obsidio, I've actually not read this one, but my husband has. So I keep it for him. Lolita, one of my favourite books of all time. Sue me. The Road to Jonestown, which is kind of like the odd one out on my shelves really. But I do have an interest in true crime and cults. So this was given to me by my uncle who also shares that interest. I'm going to have to like excuse these lights here. Um, they are coming off, they're not going back on my shelves. I got this EV from a Pokemon shop in Tokyo. Hence why it sort of like sits there on my shelves and has pride of place. The Starless Sea, I've had this for a year now. The reason I haven't read it is because I wanted to vlog it. And the reason for that is because I read The Night Circus and I really didn't enjoy it. I wanted to give Erin Morgenstern another go. 
which is why I have it. And a lot of people enjoy it, but a lot of people also enjoy the Night Circus, which I didn't like, so I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. That's book two in the Aurora cycle, which I got off Rebecca. Another recent secondhand purchase, the Guinevere Deception. I think I got this a couple of months ago. It's a Camelot retelling if I remember right. The Diviners by Libba Bray, which I've read and loved and I would highly recommend. The Throne of Swans, I've had this for a number of years now, which is another one where I'm open to opinions. Should I keep it or should I not? The Never Tilton World by Rin Chapeco, which I bought a couple of weeks ago and is high on my DVR. The Queens of Inneslea, this is a retelling of King Lear, but I've owned it for so many years now. This is another one. Do I commit or do I get rid? Court of Thorns and Roses series, I have only read the first one. When I first read it, it was one of the worst books I'd ever read and I rated it one stars. I reread this last month and boosted it up to three stars. It was good, it was enjoyable. Bear and the Nightingale, another one high up on my TBR which I've acquired recently. Percy Jackson, Trials of Apollo, Rebel of the Sands which I reread this week and loved. Heroes of Olympus which I've read, The Bourne Season, okay. After I finished The Pride of the Orange Tree, I wanted to read a lot more by Samantha Shannon because I realised how much I liked her work, but I got that far into it and wasn't feeling it. I didn't know what was going on and I wasn't enjoying it, so I stopped reading it. I think I might get rid of it, I'm not sure. Deep Blue, this is a really old YA series a long time ago, but I've never read it. I found it for like 50 pence in a second hand shop and just wanted to read it and see what it was like. I might just get rid of this, you know. These Broken Stars, which we've spoke about, um, I read and enjoyed. My latest purchase and probably my pride and joy at the moment is this Barnes & Noble edition of Arabian Nights. Because this is a Barnes & Noble exclusive, I obviously had to just wait until I could find this second hand in the UK. I love it. I, I hate that it's leather bound. Don't like that but everything else about it is just, I mean, just, just look at this. Look at it. It's like all illustrated inside as well. I picked this up after liking um, Raph and the Dawn so much. I wanted to like have something that was nice in my collection and I just love the pattern and the design on this. So yeah, it's my baby at the moment. Becoming by Michelle Obama. I've had this for a long time. I haven't read it, but I do want to read it. Percy Jackson, Heroes of Olympus, Nevermore, which I recommended near the start. The Rig, this is one that I purchased when I purchased the other two, when I got the other two adult um, fantasy and sci-fi. This is another adult sci-fi, which I wanted to try out. I did purchase them all about two years ago, but I think I have come to the realization that I just don't like adult books yet. I don't know whether to keep it or not. I don't know if I'll grow into it, but I say that when I'm 27, so maybe not. Book one in the Expanse, we've spoke about this already. Frost Art, which we've also touched on, I've read it and really enjoyed it. Been in Silver, I've had this for a long time but never read it. The Girl in the Tower, which is part of the Bear and the Nightingale series, but I found this in a charity shop for 20 pence a lot of years before I actually bought the first one. See, sometimes it pays off. One of my favourite books of all time, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which I've just finished rereading yesterday. Would highly recommend. Siege and Storm, we spoke about these two in a series before. The fifth season which I started and couldn't get into but I think it was just because I wasn't in the mood for it at the time. This is a really complex fantasy and I'm dying to get around to reading it and finishing it. I think I'm just not in the headspace, a bit like the City of Brass. I'm just not in the right mindset. This is a recent addition to my shelves and I got this one because I have a specific video idea that I wanted to film. So I have this and I have this for it. Not books that you'd think I would enjoy considering I don't read smut, but there's a specific idea that I have them for. They go with this as well, the Atlas 6. So I got them, so I got these three together this week for a specific video. So if you're interested to know what these three books have in common, subscribe so you can see my next video. Spin the Dawn, I've spoke about this, read it and really enjoyed it. Never Feed, which is book two in the Darkest Mind series, which I've never read. And you've got Aristotle and Dante. Discover the Secrets of the Universe in the corner, which I've read and enjoyed. I don't know why I'm keeping it, to be honest, because I don't think I'll ever reread it. On this shelf, I have all my Game of Thrones. I've read all of them, bar the last two, which I think is that one and that one. But I enjoyed them a lot more than the TV show. But the TV show kind of ruined the series for me. So after I watched the ending of the TV show, I didn't want anything to do with these anymore. Don't know why I've kept them. I might just get rid of them. The Passage, which is a book I read hmm, maybe about... 11 or 12 years ago now. I actually read this after Twilight. Twilight reignited my love in reading and for some reason this is what I gravitated towards. I think this is a Robin Hobb, yeah, book two of Fitz and the Fool. I'm just not really interested in them if I'm honest. A Monster Calls, which is one of my favourite books of all time. Oh, broke my heart. If you haven't read it, read it, but 
get a box of tissues. More Jenny Han. Then I have here all of my James Bond books. My uncle is a huge James Bond fan, so I'm kind of reading them for him because it's nice that we have something to talk about. But I actually read Casino Royale and all of the um, bad things about women aside, I actually really enjoyed this book. They came to Baghdad, which is my only book by Agatha Christie, but I want to read more by Agatha Christie. I haven't read this one yet though. Woven in Midnight, which is a beautiful cover, but I've but after I bought it, I came to understand that the representation in this book is really, really harmful. So I don't know whether to read this with that in mind or just get rid of it. The Midnight Lie, which I haven't read, but dying to read. The Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. I read um, his first novel, his debut novel, which is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hugo, and it was one of my favourite books. So I bought his second book, which is this one, and this is a Waterstones exclusive, I think. The Spread Edges are Magical. <laughs> the Stand by Stephen King, which surprisingly I have read, given that this is like a thousand pages, and I did enjoy it. Kingdom of the Wicked, which is a recent purchase, but one that's definitely high up on my TBR. Mirage, which is an Owl Crate edition, I believe. But I got this in a charity shop for £2.50. Honestly, charity shops in my area are so good. The Tiger and the Wolf by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Brand new condition. Got this for £3 in a second-hand shop. I've read a few of Adrian Tchaikovsky's sci-fi books. So I wanted to read something that was a little bit different from him because I liked his writing. Night World Volume 1, which I was given by Chloe from Chloe Reads Books when she was having a clear out. Because I read this maybe like when I was 16, so what, that's like 11 years ago and this was my life. But then I got rid of Volume 1, Volume 2 and Volume 3 when I was in my early 20s because I was like, oh, that's just so stupid. I wouldn't want to read that ever again and actually, I do. So... For nostalgic reasons, I asked if I could have it. The Raven Boys, which I got in a second-hand shop a couple of years ago. Obviously, this series is well done and finished with. But I kind of still wanted to read it at the time so I could be involved in everything that people were talking about. But I think I might just get rid of this. Has this aged well? Someone let me know. A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers, which is the sequel to A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet which is one of my favourite books, so I'm excited to read this one. The Batchman books by Stephen King. He wrote these novels under a different name because they didn't fit into his horror, thriller type of vibe. When I showed this off in my bookshelf tour last year, someone told me to keep onto this because this is rare and would eventually be worth quite a bit of money. That's not the reason why I'm keeping it. I'm actually reading it because I want to read The Long Walk, which I just haven't got around to reading yet. Salem's Lot. Um, I haven't read this. Is it worth reading? Otherwise, I might just chuck this in the donation pile. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I've never read this, but I'm wanting to. The Name of the Wind and the Wise Man's Fear. I've never read these, but my husband has been begging me to read them for like two years now because he listened to the audiobook for this one and he really loved it and he wants to discuss it with someone, but they're just too long to commit to. And because the series hasn't been finished and it probably will never be finished because it's sort of like a George R. R. Martin type dealio going on with this. I just don't have the motivation to read it, but I know people love it. Another book by Stephen King. I think Owen King might be his son. Sleeping Beauties, I've never read it. And then obviously A Court of Mist and Fury. I haven't read yet because I've only read A Court of Thorns and Roses, but this is the next one and I will read it. I was a massive Jacqueline Wilson reader growing up because that's all that we had to read really. But the only one that I actually kept was Kiss by Jacqueline Wilson, which was my least favorite book purely because I have it signed by her. And I'm actually really pleased that I did keep it because she was one of my favourite authors. So it does mean a lot to me to have a book that was actually signed by Jacqueline Wilson. I just wish it wasn't Kiss. I wish it was like one of the Girls in Love series, which were probably my favourite. I keep telling myself if I say them really, really cheap in a charity shop, I'm going to rebuy them. But they have to be like 10 pence because there's a lot of them. Once in future, Rebecca unhauled this and asked me if I wanted it. So I took it. So it's a recent edition of my shelves. Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. High up on my TBR. So, so high. I want to get around to reading this so soon. It's part of the Darkest Mind series. Another recent purchase, Black Sun. Dying, dying to get around to reading this one as well. Honestly, I don't know which one I want to read more at the moment, whether it's Black Sun, Shadow of the Fox, um, Sweet and Bitter Magic, The Bright and the Pale, The Bone Shard's Daughter. It just excites me so much that I have so many books that I'm dying to get around to reading. SBQR, I actually unhauled this and then just added it back onto my shelf because Mary Beard is, um, is a legend. But I'll probably never ever read this because like I said, my degree ruined it. This was a present of Rebecca this week actually. A Song of Wraiths and Ruin. I'm dying to read this but because I only just got it and there's a few things I've had longer that I want to read, I think this one might be one that I get to in the 
in a few months time. The Lord of the Rings bind up, I've only read part one. Then I've got one, two, three Robin Hobb books. Anna K, I think this is an arc that Rebecca gave me. But I think this is such a fun cover. Ready Player One, I read and enjoyed at the time, but I don't think I would enjoy it now. This is the sequel to Children of Blood and Bone, which I really, really enjoyed. I've just never got around to reading book two. But I really, really loved it. Cersei spoke about never read it. This is another one that I've picked up so many times to try and read but never been in the right mindset and that's The Rage of Dragons. This was so highly commended to me a few years ago so I bought it. It's described on the back as Gladiator meets Game of Thrones. I've never heard a bad review of this if I'm honest. Which gets me excited but because it's such a long book it's just taken me so long to try and get into it. The Institute by Stephen King, which I got off a family member. I don't know if she watches my videos or not, actually. But I do have an interest in reading this one. Vengeance Road, which is one of the most beautiful covers on my shelves. I got this from Katie Gilroy as well. This is a young adult western, and I've never read anything that's like a western before. So I'm very excited about this one. The Rhythmatist by Brandon Sanderson, which is signed. Wolf Hall, which we've spoke about. 6-4, which is a Japanese crime novel. Graceland, which I've tried to read a few times and just never got into it but another one I'm not wanting to give up on. The Darkest Minds. Sky in the Deep. Oh no what's happened here? This is why you don't put stickers on books. Sky in the Deep which I got for myself as a birthday present last year. It's a young adult viking inspired book. That's not mine it's my husband's but I just keep it here for him. The Warrior Air by Cinder Williams Chimer. This is a very popular author but I've never read anything by this author. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which is one of my favourite books of all time. I read this in winter and loved it. This is my edition of The Shining. And finally over here is just kind of where I keep my Penguin classics. Um, Brave New World. Odd one out but I had nowhere to put it. It's The Lies of Locke Lamora. I've never read it. Jane Eyre which I have read and is one of my favourite books of all time. Don't know why, I can't exactly tell you why I like it, I just love it. Anna Karenina, never read it. Wuthering Heights, never read it. Pride and Prejudice, never read it. War of the Worlds, never read it, but hope to read it soon so I can get rid of it. It's quite short. The Picture of Dorian Gray, which is most people's favourite classic when they talk to me, but I tried to read it. I got halfway into it but couldn't get into it, so again, one that I'm keeping in the hope that I will like later on. The House of the Dead, never read it. East of Eden by John Steinbeck, which I haven't read, but John Steinbeck is one of my favourite authors, so hope to read it. And Dracula by Bram Stoker, which is one of the first books that I ever bought. Now I don't know how long this video is going to be, but filming this took like a good two hours. So I deserve this. I know it seems like I just am hoarding books, books that I've had for years and never read but I do actually read 80 books a year so having this many books is realistic for me I think. When I've read a book I don't tend to keep it which is why it seems like I have the majority of them unread because I will only tend to keep the books that were either very special to me or that I really enjoyed or I'm keeping them because I think I might need to reread them so that I can continue on with a series. If one of your favourite books isn't on my shelves, please let me know what it is in the comments so I can keep my eye out for it. If I've read it, I'll let you know. But chances are I probably haven't. There is so, so many books out there to read and so little time to read them in. I wish I was one of these people that could have audiobooks on while I work to like increase how many books that I can consume in a year but I just can't focus on more than two things at once. If you've stayed to the end of this video, please let me know what I should read next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.